Secretary Sara, if you can uh, make a comment, uh, make an opening statement about how, as an educationist, how do you see this? Uh, and you're obviously an expert in, in language and curriculum. So how do you see uh, chat GPT and similar models as an education? So uh, I wear two hats currently. So I'm also teaching a course on curriculum review and design. Uh, and at the same time, I'm also in a corporate communications department where I look at communications and content generation. And in both of these arenas, chat GPT has suddenly sort of popped up as something that uh, is intriguing and in certain cases worrying. So having said that, uh, I'm just going to go on a bit of a tangent. Uh, narrative is my preferred mode of communication. So we'll, we'll go with that. Um, a friend of mine uh, knows the city very well. And when she's driving around in the city, uh, she knows the side lanes and she knows the hidden routes and she knows you know, how to get from point A to point B very efficiently. And so her relationship with GPS is very, very fraught. And she's always trying to one up the GPS. She's always trying to uh, show that she knows better. I, on the other hand, um, would lose my way anywhere. And so for me, what the GPS does is it gets me where I need to be, usually, you know, uh, despite mangling names of roads and so on and so forth, or usually in, in, in a reasonable amount of time. To me, that analogy is kind of where I see chat GPT at the moment. Um, for those who evaluate it from different perspectives, it is behaving in a certain way and it is very, very flawed. For those for whom it is filling a need, it is giving something, whether that something is efficiency, whether that something is productivity, or whether that something is basic communication. So I'm looking at sort of both of these things in tandem. So that, that would be my start. 